All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. We're going to be now casting Lazy Bear versus Opie Wrights live, which is the top four portion of the bracket. Jumping into the draft will be next. Uh, first, joining me on commentary is going to be Dells and Monaders. Hello. Hey there. Good afternoon. And I'm getting the draft loaded up. Are you guys ready to, to run over that? Do you have copies of the draft? Yep, I am ready. Perfect. Yep. Take it away. So... Here we go. We're going to have Opie Wrights versus Lazy Bear. These are two players. We just saw them play each other two times during the most recent competitive season. Uh, the first time, Lazy Bear took out Opie 7-2 by abusing a lot of very clever tricks behind the shark on Aquarium. But the second time they played each other uh, just a few weeks ago, it was a 6-6 tie. Now, stop me if you've heard this before, because in the last round, OP played against Rio, who he also had two matches against recently. Rio had beaten him twice, uh, and yet this time, OP turned it around and won 7-0. That's how he made it over here to the semifinals. So if OP is able to pull off the same thing, he could really reverse the narrative here between himself and Lazy Bear. Yeah, I think that we saw probably the best match we've ever seen from OP in the last round against Rio. Um, and he's ne he's just as familiar with Lazy Bear. Played against him last year, too, in the SCL. So I expect this to be pretty exciting for both people. Yeah, and a lot of people are saying that Lazy Bear is basically the best spy in the game at the moment. So looking at the draft here, we have bans coming in. We have Opie banning Aquarium while Lazy Bear has banned Terrace. So that makes sense. We just mentioned that the first time Opie and Lazy played this year... Uh, Lazy Bear took advantage of the shark a lot, and Opie was not very happy about it. So everyone saw this aquarium ban coming. The terrace ban from Lazy Bear, that one confuses me a little bit more, though. Yeah, I'm guessing that that's more a Lazy Bear thing. He doesn't want to play terrace than it is an Opie Rights thing. Makes sense. And then for our restricts, we have Lazy Bear restricting Redwoods, while Opie restricted Tayen. Uh, Opie is a known fan of Redwoods. Uh, there's a lot of people who aren't super comfortable on it because of, you know, all the trees blocking your view, making it nearly impossible to snipe. But nothing is impossible for Opie, so he's totally good with Redwoods, uh, and Lazy Bear doesn't really want to let him have that venue. Yeah, Opie uh very vocal about the fact that he thinks Redwoods is probably the most skill-intensive camper map, but he does think it's a camper map and that he can keep track of everything on Redwoods. And then we have our double picks here. Lazy Bear is doubling Balcony, and Opie writes, uh, more traditionally, is going with the doubled Ballroom. Yeah, Lazy Bear doubled Balcony in their last uh, last set of the season, and he won it 3-1. Uh, not surprised to see him go to it again. It It is a little bit of a coin flip against uh, pretty much anybody. And Opie actually had a couple games, I remember, on that where he was very close to taking them. Yeah, meanwhile, Ballroom, this is Opie's favorite map. It is the map that he is the most known for. He is very vocal about loving it. Uh, and he's truly, truly an expert at Ballroom. But it's not banned or restricted because Lazy Bear feels quite comfortable on it as well. And then for the single picks, they are both going to be picking the venue that their opponent restricted. So Lazy Bear is getting in the Tayen that Opie didn't want to play. And Opie is picking the Redwoods that he's comfortable with, but Lazy Bear is not as comfortable with. Yeah, I really like all these picks too. If, uh, if you were hoping for Spy Party in some relatively small boxes, you got it. That is true. These are all pretty, pretty even squares. Well, ballroom's a rectangle, but anyway, let's get into the games here. It is going to be the doubled ballroom first, and we have Opie starting us off here on Queen. Let's get started in three, two, one, playing it. And for anyone who's just tuning in, the format of this match is a best of 12, so the winner is going to be the first person to reach seven points. If they are still tied, we would go to overtime. There's a bug from Opie, a wrong arm bug walking alongside with the ambassador. Fantastic technique. Yeah, it's really good. It's right as we're resetting our idol anyway, and we can start it with the right hand and then turn around as they're walking past. And then it makes that walk by the Amba so much less suspicious because he can see we didn't bug. 
Yeah, Opie was waiting around in that conversation specifically for that opportunity. This is why he's a master of ballroom. He knows where all of the best spots to bug are, and he will set himself up for them while getting all of the other mission progress that he needs. That bug looked super, super natural. Um, and we weren't even like that close to the ambassador. It's not like we rammed ourselves into them. We were walking at a very polite distance beside them and the arm wasn't visible. Yeah, and I think that when OP on Ballroom gets a, uh, gets a bug this strong, you can expect him to not do another hard tell. He'll, he'll either go for prints or statues here uh, because he knows he's not a big suspect. Exactly, and oh my god, that is two green flirts. That means Opie is going to be rushing over here to put the book away, and I guarantee you he's just going to immediately go to those center statues. Uh, if the spy has gotten the bug, the contact, and the flirt slowly and goes to the center statues with like 30 seconds left, maybe the sniper will shoot. But no sniper is going to shoot you for center statues here with a minute 50 left. Lazy Bear would have to be incredibly, incredibly on top of his game to take this shot. Uh, and it is possible. Lazy Bear is a very good sniper, but he would have to be certain of the bug and he would have to credit two flirts. And it doesn't look like that's going to happen. No focus on OP there at the statues. Lazy Bear may be holding the laser over Queen for a moment, but not considering a shot. OP gets the first point. Yeah, Opie very much known for rushes uh, on Ballroom, but those rushes usually, the sniper's going to see a mission done. They're going to see the purloin gone or a swap happen. So to be done that early without anything showing, Lazy Bear knows he can hold his shot, but it's just not true. Yeah, I think this is just one of the best walking bugs that I've ever seen. I mean, you see a lot of spies wait for the ambassador to pass and then start walking alongside them. But this one, it's like I said, we're just so far away from the end, but we just don't look like we're necessarily in bugging range. There's no visible arm. It's just fantastic. I think almost no sniper from that angle would have caught that bug. Yeah, you would have had to be turned all the way to the right, and that's just not a good position for where the ambo is going. All right, well, Lazy Bear is going to have to match that with a spy win of his own if he wants to keep the score even. He does not want to start the set off going down 0-2. to two. Uh, We said that Lazy Bear might be one of the best spies in the game. Let's see if he can pull it off here in 3, 2, 1, Planet. Yeah, and Opie only has one sniper loss in his past 23 competitive games, including uh, this tournament and Supper, uh, Summer Cup. So I'm expecting him to win almost all of his sniper games, even if it is against the best buy in the game that a lot of people consider. Yeah, so we have chat correcting me a little bit about my statement of no visible arm. I feel like this always happens when I say <laughs> that a bug is invisible. There's always someone in chat who's like, oh, well, for, for one pixel, you could see a bit of it. And you're right, I'm, there definitely was a tiny bit of it that was visible, but when you're the sniper and you're looking at it in the moment, it's very hard to catch. And so Lazy Bear in this game already has the flirt done. That is two green flirts. We cheesed it. We got in next to the seduction target. We flirted. We immediately left. Now we don't have to worry about it. And we're doing a microfilm over here at green. Ambassador's being watched for a bug from Kane right now. So we're not looking at Teal over here at the bookshelf. Yeah, and good thing we weren't looking because the head turn was very much on screen. Well, Lazy Bear seems to be planning to go for a microfilm finish here. The Ambassador is in such a buggable spot. I thought we might pass behind him and try for some sort of wrong arm, but Lazy Bear seemingly decided against it. We started pathing there, though. I think we might have been considering it if we felt the laser would allow us. Oh, this is pretty good for Lazy Bear, I think. Uh, the Ambassador going to the other bookshelf means that we can combo that with Prince if we can get another one somewhere. Uh, and we can do the microfilm and the print at the same time. It, it'll probably shoot us up the suspect list, but it, it also can probably get by as long as the ambassador is not uh, super safe somewhere else. Right. Well, it is a bit dangerous to try to do a microfilm on a printable book because the sniper might be more likely to be watching you, but that's exactly what Lazy Bear's going for. And look at this ambassador. The ambassador is in such danger right now in the middle of a crowded conversation. He's moving over to another one. You have to be watching Seek for a bug right now. You have to be watching Duke for a bug right now. You cannot be watching Teal over at the blue shelf. Yeah, I mean, it's just perfectly timed both times. People very much near the Amba completely unsafe and so we get two animations uh 
for microfilm, and that's a hard held done and a fingerprint halfway done. We just need a contact and another print. Unfortunately, we did pick up a highlight for it, but we can't know for sure what the highlight was for. Now, I'm pretty sure that Opie was watching the ambassador there and so could not have seen the microfilm, but he might know Teal has been to two different color bookshelves and she has a print. She's someone worth watching. Lazy Bear made an attempt to go for that briefcase, didn't quite get to it in time though, and had to cancel away from it. Now it's starting to look a little bit dicey because there's only 40 seconds left. We still need another print. It's still on that green shelf, but we also would need to get a contact with the double agent who's smudging the print on the green shelf. Everything is suddenly falling apart for Lazy Bear here. 20 seconds left. I don't think we're gonna be able to go for the print finish anymore. We might have to go bug the ambassador and get the print on the blue shelf. That seems to be the only way to win at this point. It's what Lazy Bear's going for. There's the bug. Opie doesn't seem to be reacting immediately. A second print for Lazy Bear here, but it's going to go into overtime for only a few seconds. Opie might line up the shot and he does. He takes it on Lazy Bear when the overtime begins. Yeah, he takes it at negative 0 0.001 seconds, just making sure that overtime actually happens before he shoots uh that's a really unfortunate there because i think that that was just as good of a spy game as we saw op in the previous game i think so too the microfilm timing was some of the best i've ever seen do you think we could have won that if instead of canceling away from that briefcase at the shelf we should have just gone and taken the print there immediately yeah i think that uh i think that if we went like past the briefcase we might have been able to cut sorry off from trying to get it but it, it was a tall task to try and get that briefcase before her so i don't really know it there yeah, wasn't I a lot of things touched by the ambassador that game yeah, that was just sort of the crucial moment there. If we had gotten the fingerprint, we would have been in a much better position. The double agent still wasn't going to be entering conversation, which is really unfortunate. But actually, they entered at the end at about 10 seconds left. So if we had that print, we could have just done a contact instead of a crash bug. It's truly, truly unfortunate because that was a fantastic spy game. But OP is now up 2-0. And we will be seeing Opie spying again here, playing as Irish, also known as Green Dress, in three, two, one, playing it. Yeah, also a bit unfortunate we couldn't get that banana bread earlier because then you can go to that bookcase and get the print without showing that bug to Opie Wrights on the way in. Oh boy, this one is immediately starting off with a white time ad there, right at the front windows. The ambassador was sort of in a little bit of danger. He was at the windows as well. There were people passing around by him, but it's not quite the time ad Opie wanted. And here we go, we enter right next to the ambassador. No, we don't. We, we sort of really brute force our way through that in a way to make sure that we can get the bug there. Yeah, that's one of the, uh, the scary bugs if you're Irish. Uh facing the camera as Irish for a, for a walking bug usually gets you shot. Um, but I did see we got a little light on the teal for that uh, statues at the start of the game. So I think that the time ad was at least noticed relatively quickly uh, because she would send her statues and got low lit right after the time ad happened. Interesting. Yeah, that bug was really dangerous. Usually you want to do Ooh. it when the ambassador is further at the back. Oh my God. Lazy That's Bear's a green swap. He's That's a green swap stars. ending. Because we've got that mission showing. Oh, wow. The shot comes off just for just for what? Was it for passing by the ambassador again? No, the ambassador was nowhere near there. Uh, it was for uh, the list was seen. Oh, the list was seen. Okay. I see. Oh, yes. The list goes off there from Pearls while we're finishing the inspect while we do the swap. I was still thinking about the swap. I wasn't even thinking about the Purloin anymore at that point. <laughs> Which was Opie's plan as well. Yeah, that's probably exactly what the sniper was going through. Uh, I feel like we've been talking a lot recently about how Opie likes to do these rushes on Ballroom or on any venue, really. So it's definitely something Lazy Bear could have been more wary of i would say i mean i think we literally did a cast like what yesterday two days ago where we talked about opie's rushing opie talked about his rushing uh and this is why you keep your opponent on their toes at all times yeah it it puts them in a spot where they feel like they have to shoot well before they 
are expected to. Um, not doing flirts and finishing in 45 seconds is one of the most powerful things you can do in Spy Party. Yeah, and I think Lazy Bear knew about it, uh, and so he was watching that purloin, and just the combination of a purloin going off and someone in the chain going to center statues, he just thought, yeah, I bet he already has a bug at this point. It's probably the rush. All right, so that's Lazy Bear getting his first point on the board here, and now we're going to be seeing Lazy Bear trying to tie it back up, playing as Orange Sorry. Let's get started in three, two, one, playing it. Take control to go away from that dead conversation he didn't want to uh, end up in, and does go right next to the seduction target and gets a classic Lazy Bear 51%. <laughs> Yeah, and in the last game, Lazy Bear did the cheese flirt. He just entered, flirted, walked away immediately. If the sniper catches you doing that, it's somewhat of a hard tell. It would make you insanely suspicious. Uh, we did it once the last game, and sadly, we didn't get the win for it. But between games, Opie can definitely be looking at the replays. Uh, so if he sees that Lazy Bear is doing those kinds of flirts, then he will start watching for them at the beginning of the game. And Lazy Bear knows that, which is why I think he's not going to be doing it twice in a row. Yeah, just an innocent reject here. Uh, Queen going to get a briefcase, and wow, really close to the Ambassador on that return uh, for being an AI. That's super surprising. Meanwhile, we've just been waiting here in the conversation. The timer for the flirt expired. It's now up to 82%. Uh, Wheels is leaving, so we're going to be leaving as well. Where are we going to end up? We could just chase him, but... Instead, we're standing here in this bug position. Uh, if the ambassador walks through the back of the venue, you can get a bug here, but only if there's cover, which there isn't right now. Yeah, not a lot of progress to be had right now with the ambassador so safe. Uh, just cutting through Twin and Toby there. Gonna get this left side bookcase? No, we're gonna get redirected from the briefcase, actually. Yeah, the redirect could be an attempt at a low light, but Opie is not known for taking those sorts of behavioral low lights for redirects or canceling your path or anything like that. We're going to be entering over here with the double agent now. Conversation's looking pretty full to me. The only bad news is the SDA is alone with the ambassador, so the only people with a real BB would be the people in our conversation. Small men leaving as we started, so the only people with real BB is going to be us, Twin, Tex, and General. Yeah, And a and green purloin going off in the aftermath of that. But since we were the only conversation with a real BB, Opie was a lot more likely to be looking at it, I would imagine. Yeah, he, he actually missed one low light on the small man. I'm pretty surprised there out of Opie. But uh, we see the purloin is gone, and we immediately get a ton of low lights. Yep, he has the party completely narrowed down. He wasn't watching for the fade, but he's definitely watching for that bug. Cannot get away with that when you're one of only two remaining suspects on the venue. Oh, my God. And so that's going to be third point for Opie Rights. This spy game from Lazy Bear wasn't quite as clean as the last one. Yep, and so we head into uh, Balcony. Opie's up 3-1, and it looks like Opie put on Purloin. He did this in their last set as well, actually. The last oh week boy platinum. that's an interesting choice usually people have bug on as the third mission the balcony is pretty crowded and making the sniper watch for a tiny arm movement while tracking all of the flirts and other things is generally a lot harder for the sniper than watching for the guest list but uh switching things up like that can sometimes throw the sniper off let's see how it works out for opie here in three two one playing it yeah, I think that one of the benefits of Purloin on Balcony is that a lot of snipers are just naturally going to be watching for bugs. Uh, it's really hard to get out of that habit, especially on Balcony. Um, and then you can just forget about Toby sometimes because you so very rarely have to watch it. And the end of red. Okay, well, there's the contact coming off. We hit a nice green test there. Everyone's in conversation. It's pretty early. 
Uh, the seduction target was low lit for redirecting and taking a spot on the pad right behind the ambassador, but it did mean that he came to windows with us and we got a first flirt without looking like we were flirting. Here's Toby, but no, we're not going to be going for the purloin, that's for sure. We're right next to our seduction target. He's right here next to us in conversation, and we're waiting a decently long time. Oh, the flirt cooldown wasn't done. He stayed that close to us the whole time. There we go. Green test flirt, 83%. We picked up a highlight, but there are three highlights in the party, and all, we go, all we're going to need now is one more flirt for 17%. That means you can do it from anywhere in the conversation, any distance, uh, and we'll win. And we have a minute left to do it, so we don't have to look like we're talking very quickly. No, but we could talk very quickly. Uh, we also, Yeah, we are going to right now. Uh, I think that that's more powerful than talking at 11 or 12 seconds, which the sniper's going to expect. Um, yeah. The double agent actually had safety off for the white BB and then entering and talking again. Yeah, I agree with you that. that talking earlier was also a good choice because then the sniper has to commit to a decision. They have to, the sniper has three highlights here or four highlights by the end of it. So are they really going to take a shot on Irish at 45 seconds left? Or is the sniper going to say, well, let's just wait a little bit longer. Maybe I'll get a bit more information to help me make a decision. Uh, especially because Irish did leave and re-enter in a completely different position, so she wasn't next to the same person twice. Yeah, totally. Uh, Boots actually landed in three different spots also, so even landing right next to her wasn't a problem. Um, I would expect that Opie is going to put absolutely zero suspicion on White BB this game. Yeah, that is true. Lazy Bear <laughs> is known for hitting green tests. I think his green test rate is something like 60%. It's crazy. Uh, let's see if Lazy Bear can hit those green tests. Playing as wheels here. Let's get started in three, two, one, playing it. Wow, we are right next to this ambassador, but Wheels just does not have the bugging animation to do that, so we're not going to. We did leave at the same time as the ambassador. I wonder if we were considering another one of those bugs where you're walking alongside the ambassador, but just didn't take it. Ooh, everyone's in conversation. Oh, the double agent leaves. Well, we can still enter next to the seduction target. Yeah, pretty good spot to enter, but we have no flirt. We're going to finally get our first one here, and it is unfortunately a white test, so... Not sure how much we're going to be able to finish this game without a bug. And Wheel's obviously not the bug character. And the end of red. Well, there's the contact coming off now. The ambassador was the only person out. I wonder if we're in range for a bug here with twin behind us, uh, between us. Probably not, though. Man, yeah, I'm worried about finishing Flirt here. We're only at 34%. We might have to talk a total of three times. Oh my god, we started taking a drink, and then we cancelled out of it, I think, in order to look more like an AI. Yeah, I think that we were interrupted during that drink take, uh, and doing that move, you can see it did not earn a low light from OP rights because Lazy Bear is well known to be able to pull off weird AI things like that. Yeah, the good news is we get this next flirt here with a green test not directly next to our seduction target, but the bad news is it doesn't change the situation. We're still going to have to talk one more time in order to finish, and we're one of only two highlights here. Uh, passing by the ambassador again without a bug, but there's 17 seconds left now. Uh, Purloin definitely not an option here for Lazy Bear. We're going to have to enter. We're going to have to get a strong enough flirt to finish, and we are, but we talked instantly. We stopped, talked. It was very visible to Opie, and he takes the shot. Yeah, just really powerful game there from Opie, just getting almost the entire party low lit. It's down to two people, and we're the only highlight, and then you can just see all the suspicious stuff we're doing in there at the end. Yeah, very, very strong control of the party there from OP, being able to correctly lowlight all of those guests, even though they were all in for the banana bread. Uh, Lazy Bear may be regretting the balcony choice, because I think OP showed some real mastery of the venue there. Uh, here we go. OP is now going to be spying again as Green Dress. He's up 5-1 to one at this point, so he only needs two more points. Let's get started with this game in 3, 2, 1, playing it. Yeah, and he's now picked Irish in 75% of his spy games this match. Very interesting. That's three in a row. Uh, oh, wow, there's a Purloin, green Purloin over there at the windows right at the start of the game. 
Do you think Lazy Bear is on top of this? I think that Pearls is on top of this, and by this I mean the center of that conversation, but I have no idea if Lazy Bear notices. We do get at least one other reject there from uh, Rocker. Oh boy, another reject from Rocker, but Rocker is low lit for going from window to window to window, but brought immediately back up to a highlight, and so is Opie. Lazy Bear knows exactly which people rejected. This is top Banana level sniper break. play. Oh my wow. god, Banana Break comes up. It's the moment of truth. He has to make a decision. Is it Rocker or Irish? And he decides on Rocker. That is an unbelievable green test, Banana Bread, as soon as she starts talking. Uh, to be able to frame her that well and hit that green is so important. Gosh, and even though Lazy Bear lost that, what I was going to say was it still shows really strong sniper play because even while Lazy Bear was taking the behavioral low light and watching all of those other things, he was still so on top of the reject chain that he knew to immediately bring her back up and he had the whole chain in mind. But unfortunately, he just he took the wrong shot. It was almost a 50-50 there. And the narrative makes sense. You think, oh, Rocker, or Leopard Print, as we sometimes call her, she saw that Irish rejected, so she knew it was a good time to go for a purloin. That makes sense for what the spy would do. So I understand why that shot was taken. Oh, yeah, totally. And, I mean, her entering and talking during the BB to just get missions done quick and force a shot, that also plays right into what Opie would want to do. Just... Man, he hits both of those green tests, and they are both huge. All right, so correct me if I'm wrong. That was one. a point for OP, correct? So OP is now up 6-1, to one, or are we seeing an issue with the scoreboard here? Uh, nope, I've got it at 6-1 as well. He's won all three of these balcony games, and he was 3-1 on ballroom. Oh, scoreboard my corrected. God. OP, OP on his way to a near sweep here. Lazy Bear's got one chance here to stay in the game. And even if he wins it, he will have to win every game from here on out to stay in it. Opie just needs one more point if he can shoot the twin here. Let's get started in three, two, one, play in it. Yeah, we were talking about being 6-2 uh, down against Yeesh last match. Uh, I think that being down 6-1 against Opie might be scarier. Wow, here's everyone in conversation, but Lazy Bear picking up a highlight for the position here. Contact comes off. The double agent is in the middle of taking a drink, so she gets low lit. You cannot do your banana bread while taking a drink. And Lazy Bear himself is going for a pearl oh. in here. It's the white fade right on screen. Opie sees it, and there we go. Opie takes the set 7-1. That is very surprising there. One, I don't... I wonder if Lazy Bear even remembered that he left it on. Um, because Lazy Bear would not have wanted Perline on most of the time, I don't think. Uh, but as soon as he sees, he's on, sees that it's on, he goes ahead and just takes the list. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, the mission setup doesn't automatically revert back to whatever you want it to between games. You have to change it manually. So sometimes people forget... It's possible that Lazy Bear like just noticed the purloin was on and was like, "Oh, maybe OP also doesn't realize it's on." But mm, tough break. And we're actually gonna have OP available for some interview and questions if the uh, commentators want to speculate on any of the matches or have any questions. Uh, it looks like he's hopping in now. Go ahead. Okay. Hey, OP, GG. Yeah, uh, it was it was a good set. And to answer your question, Dell, as I was listening to the stream, Lazy Bear did know he had it on. Um, I, I actually questioned beforehand if he was like, did you want to switch to bug? And he's like, yeah, Pearl one's fine. Gotcha. Um, so you come out of Ballroom 3-1. Um, nobody's going to be surprised by that. Uh, it's your doubled pick. You guys historically do very well on your doubled picks. Um, Coming out of it 3-1 and then sweeping balcony. How do you how do you feel about the sweep of balcony? Were you like in any way expecting that? Well, uh balcony is always a little bit unpredictable at times. Um, you know, uh, but I feel like I have a really good grasp on uh, some things, so, some aspects of the venue that a lot of players don't really, that I can can sort of narrow the party where where other people might not be able to. And I I, I just feel like I have a very good chance on balcony with uh i've got a good green test rate so just lazy obviously his green test rate, rate was actually higher than mine this past season but i i am perfectly perfectly comfortable playing balcony on both spy and sniper and i wasn't super concerned but 4-0 you know it can happen because it's balcony but you know i wasn't really expecting that 
Uh, you also, on Ballroom, were very close to a 4-0. You just uh, barely got shot as soon as Lazy Bear saw the Purloin on, on Ballroom. Um, were you planning, actually, on picking Green Dress Irish for three out of your four? No, stars? no, I definitely wasn't. Uh, that, that was that was just coincidence. Uh, sometimes the random the randomness will get you. Um, because I, I usually mostly random my spy. Sometimes I'll pick off of someone if I if I really don't want to play them for that particular game. If I've got a certain game plan in mind, but um, usually it's 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 mostly random. Random plus one on occasion. So yeah, Irish was not super like like the, the game plan. How do you feel overall beating Lazy Bear seven one? I think in the last in in the SCL Platinum series, you guys went against each other twice. I believe Lazy Bear won seven two the first time, and then you guys tied six six. Is that something that you expected to do? I know Lazy Bear, obviously being first seed yourself, uh, fifth seed was going seven one something that you expected. Well, between me and Lazy Bear, it's it's almost always very close. And even when it's not like like it. It really depends on the day. We've played each other a ton, and I think that with this match, we're actually exactly even in terms of uh, win draw loss. We have two wins, two draws, and two losses between us in like non venue tournaments. Thank so, you. like, um, and I think in fact, it's not just two, 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 but I am up exactly one game after this set, uh, because of, so it was like a seven five to, to him, a seven two to him. And the seven five to me, a seven one to me, and then two draws. So that that's those are six six. So it's like the the game score in like serious competitive sets, sets between us is like absurdly close. Uh, so it's always a bit nerve wracking to be playing against Lazy Bear and coming out seven one's great. Uh, if I would not expect to be able to re repeat that performance, you know, consistently. How surprising was the balcony pick? Is that something that you you anticipated heading into the draft? You know, uh, not too surprising actually. Uh, I uh, against. Uh, who was lazy uh, against Lagorv? I, I think Lagorv banned Balcony and Lazy Bear expressed that he had actually wanted to play Balcony. So I, w I was a little bit unsurprised when I saw it picked, and it's definitely something that he likes to lean into with the with the green test rate he's got. Um, but yeah, I, I I just prefer to get rid of the the aquarium. I don't want to play that play, yeah. play him on that. <laughs> and then, um, uh, how nervous were you? Uh, in mission countdown after that rush on on ballroom or were you, is that kind of your comfort spot is that where you you feel most comfortable which there is the we, <laughs> well there's, there's only one that actually got to a mission win count down here in this case um the other one was still pending uh there's a lot of like, like it, it's very tense when you're in mission win countdown that early after just doing a bunch of things at once um, but also I, I i really think that that is a very strong way of playing the game like even he, he lazy bear said to me in match chat that was like i he, he was like i he's going to rush game 1 100% and he still missed it and uh you know a, a lot of that is like the really really nice bug i had oh that that bug in game 1 was just oh, i loved it yeah it's a good bug we loved it too and i mean we knew as soon as you got the two flirt and the double agent was available that that game was going to end pretty quick and you were going to end it as not a shootable suspect. Yeah, it's really hard to be shooting someone and just going to center statues at two minutes left in the game uh, if you have no no vision on the bug, uh, even if you think that I'm going to be rushing, because my rushes usually don't like to finish with like just soft tail games. It's like bug bug contact seduce inspects is not usually how I do rushes, uh, but in this case, it's kind of lined up with the green tests. They almost always show at least one thing to the sniper. Yeah, yeah. It usually has like a purloin or a swap in there, that kind of, that, guy, that kind of thing for sure. Yeah, well, a fantastic set overall. Thank you for joining us, Opie.